cool. It's been a while since I've done a video. How are you guys all doing? Welcome back. I am just going to get started because this Power Pop update is going to be long. Let's just jump right into the Power Pop. I'm going to be showing you items I've amassed been collecting for the past six to eight months, maybe even a little bit longer. Um, it's been a while since I've concentrated on Power Pop. So I want to focus on two resources that um, I recently obtained. This one is from my friend Jess over at Love Spit Love on Instagram. He sent me this old copy of this magnet magazine from October 2002. And it's, it's a great Power Pop resource. It's their Power Pop edition or issue and I'll just show you some pictures of it it's pretty cool so focus on the 80s look at my wonderful DBs right there I just love the heck out of the DBs you got Dwight Twilley um, just an, a really nice recap of Power Pop they got Let's Active in here Matthew Sweet Posies from the 90s so you know all the essentials, I believe I skipped over the 70s. So they have Cheap Trick, of course, Raspberries. This is a really neat read. So thank you, Jess, for that. Next, I wanna show kind of what's been my Power Pop Bible since the summer months. And this is John Borak's Shake Some Action 2.0. So this was released last year and it's the second edition, obviously. It covers the 200 greatest Power Pop albums from 1970 to 2017. And it is just a fascinating, amazing resource. Um, so he just kind of counts down, you know, what his favorite or most essential Power Pop albums are. Again, it's subjective, but I have just discovered a ton of Power Pop bands from this book that I didn't know about. There's Pez Band. He has them rated at number 47. So, um, yeah, some of what I'm showing today I actually found in Mr. Borak's book. If you guys want to order this book, there's Teenage Fan Club's Grand Prix, which is actually my favorite album of theirs. Todd Rundgren's Something Anything. From his last book, he has this whole section where um, it's kind of you're comparing both books and what his ranking was uh, from the last book compared to this book. Um, and then he also has like top 10 albums from each year from 1996 to 2017 and then more reviews on the back of the book. So I just wanted to quickly mention that if you really like finding books that are kind of like in a list format and you want to learn more about these power pop bands, I highly recommend this book. I hope it's still available. I know a couple weeks ago when I checked the website, there were still copies available. I will leave a link below. Um, to the website if you guys want to go ahead and order a copy of this. It is just exceptional and it really has been my Power Pop Bible, my Power Pop go-to. Excellent book right here. Okay, so I want to quickly go over some additions to the collection. I'm not going to spend too much time on them because I have talked about these bands or some of these bands in length before. So you guys have probably already heard of these bands. I picked up on vinyl Teenage Fan Club songs from Northern Britain. Uh, these recent reissues are excellent. This one's from 2018. The reason I love them is that they all come with a bonus 7-inch. Like in all these reissues, they've come with a 7-inch. So on this one, it's Middle of the Road and Broken. Really cool. These are done really well. I'm really happy with them. So this is a favorite album of theirs, and I am happy to pick that up. I'm happy that I picked that up. Then we've got 13, another fantastic one from their catalog. This one's kind of an underrated one, in my opinion. I would probably rate this in my top three or four if I were to do a Teenage Fan Club ranking. So again, this came with the seven inch and then I picked up Howdy. Actually, I got this one for, for Christmas and this one is a gatefold. Brilliant album, more of like a, a 60s vibe on this one. I Need Direction, that's an awesome song. I'm not gonna review each of those albums, but um, 
yeah, I'm really happy with those Teenage Fan Club reissues. So more I picked up kind of expanding upon, uh, I don't know, probably my last Power Pop video, I featured Dwight Twilly. So I picked up Twilly Don't Mind, which I don't know, I'm starting to think this might be my favorite out of all of his albums that I've heard thus far. Oh, just such a sweet album. And then I picked up the self-titled Twilly. I've had these for months and months. And then this one is a really underrated LP of his. And I don't hear about this one mentioned too often. Um, again, it's called Scuba Divers. Just catchy as heck. I love this album and I'm surprised more people don't give it praise or mention it too often, but Dwight Trilly, I mean, he knows how to write good songs, strong melodies, harmonies, one of the best artists in power pop right here. So next I'm going to be talking about one of my local hero musicians, Matthew Sweet, and I was able to pick up the Intervention uh, remaster of Altered Beast, and I got this from Acoustic Sounds. They said the cover was in bad shape, and it's actually not like I got $10 off of it. I don't know if, yeah, you can see like a little dent right here. It's not a big deal, but it was $10 off. So the gatefold, these intervention reissues really are magnificent. I can only hope that they reissue in reverse in the future because that one deserves a reissue. To me, that's his masterpiece album. So Altered Beast, fantastic. 25th anniversary edition, double LP set. It has six bonus tracks, 100% analog mastering from the original master tapes by Ryan Smith. So yeah, go ahead and pick these up if you ever do see them, they are worth it. And then just quickly, this is an update to my collection. I found the Legacy Deluxe Edition of Matthew Sweet's Girlfriend, which I already have the cassette, I already had the CD. Um, I found this for a good price locally, downtown. So it's a double, double CD set. It has bonus tracks on the first disc and then the second disc is Good Friend, uh, another take of this album. He also covers Cortez the Killer from Neil Young. So that's pretty, pretty great. Nice set right here that I picked up for a good deal. Finally, what I really wanted to get to was the new Matthew Sweet album and it's called Cat's Paw. It was just released in January, so last month. And I got the orange vinyl edition right here. I'm really happy with this as well as his last album, uh, Wicked System of Things. What's sweet is that he plays all of the instruments on here except for drums and you know he frequently collaborates with Rick Mank who you know was in the Springfields and Velvet Crush and he's played with Matthew Sweet for a while. I love Rick Mank's drumming style. This is like classic rock combined with his 90s power pop albums. It is wonderful. And I like how someone put that um, it's the best crazy horse album Neil Young never made. <laughs> I thought that was put, I thought that was pretty spot on. Yeah, Neil Young's guitar is just stamped all over this thing. So I don't know if he was kind of listening to Neil Young a lot during the creation of this album or what. It's, it's a very good thing in my opinion, I will just say that. So probably my favorite album released this year so far. I I haven't been following new music too much lately for this year, but again, it's only February, so I haven't been too wowed or impressed by many other new releases because we're still early in the year. So, but this would be my number one thus far. So pick this up or give it a sample, Matthew Sweet's Cat's Paw. By the way, if I did not mention this video is covering both Power Pop and Jangle Pop additions to my collection. So sorry that I forgot that critical piece of information. Pez Band, I got this off of eBay. This is their second album, Laughing in the Dark. This copy's in really good shape. So I'll go ahead and show the label. It's on Passport Records. This has the energy and attitude, short punchy songs with a lot of jangle. Sometimes I think I like this one more than their first album, actually. The more I listen to this, oh man, the song I'm Leaving, killer. Come on, Madeline. This is 
quite good, quite good. And I featured Pez Band in a prior Power Pop video, so this is all I'm gonna I'm gonna mention about that one. Okay, moving on to some Jangle Pop from Athens. Yes. So my friend Joe and his Instagram handle is let me get this right, Athens four four one. Uh, he sent me this seven inch from Love Tractor, and it has two songs. I'll just kind of show the back there, and it's on white vinyl. So thank you, Joe. This kind of got me thinking that, hey, I need to hear more from Love Tractor because they were one of those um, crucial Athens bands from the early 80s, like R.E.M. and Pylon and Flat Duo Jets. Then I recently saw that they reissued their first album. I think just last month this came out this new reissue. So this is their first album. It's just self-titled. I believe it was originally released in 1982. Uh, what's cool is that Bill Berry from R.E.M. is actually on drums on this record. This is unique. This is all instrumental. So if you like instrumental jangle pop music, this is going to be up your alley. Again, there's no vocals. It's kind of a refreshing listen, you know, to hear some instrumental music for a change. And this album does not disappoint. I... I'm glad I got this. It's a solid reissue. Okay, I gotta grab the second stack here. Again, you guys, there is quite a lot to cover. So I need to stop procrastinating, right? I just need to put out videos on a regular basis and then I won't uh, kind of be overwhelmed when I film a new video. Okay, I'm gonna talk about Richard Heyman next. This is his album, it's called Living Room, wow. This guy follows the classic power pop formula to a T and he does it so well. This is the 1990 Cypress reissue of this album. Uh, I was kind of confused at first cause I was like, um, I've been seeing a different cover of that. So this is the reissue, okay, on Cypress. And I found this in Lincoln months and months ago when it was safer to go to record stores on a more regular basis. But uh, so this is an artist from New Jersey. It's called Living Room because basically he recorded this in his living room in Manhattan. He plays most of the instruments on this. If you like Marshall Crenshaw, Nick Lowe, Elvis Costello, The Beatles, uh, you're just going to really gravitate towards this and latch on because it is, this is some fine music right here. Well-crafted songs. Just the harmonies are so good on this. Um, I especially love the songs All for the Girl, Oh No Elaine, Wouldn't That Be a Riot, and uh, what's the other one? Night Ride Rail. And this was also mentioned in John Borak's Power Pop book. So I, I can't recommend that enough. And then I wanna show, um, this might be his follow-up album to Living Room. Uh, I'd have to double check, but this is just called Hey Man. Lots of energy on this, another solid album. I found this for um, a decent price on eBay. And we'll look at that case case is cracked so there's a little chip there bummer um if you're not on the power pop train get on it because you need to hear this stuff your ears are gonna like it at, i'm pretty certain i mean who doesn't love well executed harmony so richard hammond uh brilliant artist i know he has more albums out there i just have these two to show for now so we're gonna move on to crippled pilgrims next and I found this one off of eBay. I had never heard of this band before until I got the brilliant box set or set of Strum and Thrum, which I featured in my favorites of 2020 video, which I'll leave a link up, up there. Um, so yeah, two LP set, lots of obscure jangly bands on here. They're on the first LP with their song Black and White. Uh, yeah, I recommend this if you like Jingle Pop, by the way. I like giving that praise because it is well deserving of praise. So yeah, this is a Jangle Pop band from Washington, DC. They definitely have kind of a post-punk edge to them. Really love the song Oblivious and Numb. I would say they're also influenced by Husker Du and The Replacements. So um, Crippled Pilgrims. This is um, collected recordings 1983 to 1985 and they didn't stick around too long. So this is a nice set to have. Oblivious 
speaking of the replacements, I recently got this reissue set of Please to Meet Me, which that's that's a very power pop album, right? It has a uh, three CDs and the remastered album on vinyl. Uh, I'll, I'll show it a little bit at the end, but really got a good deal on that. Richard Barone, uh, leader of the bongos. I mentioned the bongos in a couple of videos before. So this is his solo album called Primal Dream. And um, this is kind of a cool version because it does include a press release packet with a photo of him. Sorry, you guys. Put it there. Notice the Rickenbacker. So yeah, the bongos were quite eclectic with their sound. Um, this is just straightforward power pop. This sounds slightly dated, but it's still very listenable, very enjoyable. And Fred Schneider from the B-52s actually does some guest vocals on Mr. Used to Be. Um, so this was produced by Don Dixon, as well as Richard Brown. Yeah, I like this. Plenty of power pop catchiness, and I especially liked Side One. So Richard Barone's Primal Dream is the name of the album. I want to talk about Icicle Works next. How did I not properly listen to this band until six or seven months ago? Uh, that's terrible, right? But better late than never. And you probably recognize the song Whisper to a Scream, Birds Fly. Ian McNabb has such a mode of vocals and I'm just, I'm really drawn to that. I think it's, the vocals are superb. These are well-written songs, kind of hard to classify them. Like, are they new wave? Are they jangle pop? Are they a little post-punk? Um, I'm just gonna put them in this video, what the heck. <laughs> So this is their first album. This is the one I recommend the most out of the ones I've heard anyway. And then I wanna say thank you to Patrick. His Instagram handle I'm putting down below right here. Um, I've done several trades with him during COVID, which has been excellent. And the trades have probably been kind of lopsided. He sent me um, just beyond awesome stuff. And you're gonna see some of the stuff he sent me um, some of it in this video, some of it um, in an upcoming finds video. But yeah, this is their follow-up. It's called, If You Want to Defeat Your Enemy, Sing His Song. And I like this album, although I don't feel it's as strong as the first album I just showed. The song that's definitely power pop on here is the third song, Understanding Jane. Evangeline, that's a really good song as well. I think the only song I wasn't too thrilled about was Traveling Chest. Um, when you're a mine, that's another great one. I'll show the label real quick. Beggar's Banquet. Next, I want to talk about Tommy Keen. Uh, I'm a late comer to his music. Again, like I say, better late than never, but I was really late. And what a power pop master, right? So Tommy Keen started playing in a few bands in the 70s. Um, I think one of the bands he was in was called The Raz with two Zs. And he even opened for the Ramones and Patti Smith. So that's pretty impressive, right? And he was in a band with Richard Heyman too, which I just talked about a little bit ago. This was the first album I bought uh, last summer. I found this one. This is called Songs from the Film. And I love this album. Let me go ahead and show the label really quick. I have the original insert in there, Geffen. So the songs Listen to Me and Gold Town, those are definitely two standout tracks. So I, I ended up picking that up and then I found this one in South Dakota months ago. This is an EP called Run Now. This is a terrific EP. In fact, this was produced by T-Bone Burnett and Don Dixon. And then I found Crashing the Ether on CD, which is one of his uh, newer albums, well, 2005. And then this, I was surprised to find this one. This is called The Real Underground. This has unreleased demos and rarities. It was released in 93. Some amazing covers on here. Flaming Groovy Shakes Some Action, as well as The Who's Tattoo. Um, there's 23 songs on this. Unfortunately, Tommy Keen died unexpectedly in 2017, I think from natural causes. So we won't be getting any more new music from him, but his legacy lives on again.
a brilliant power pop artist. Matters sometimes that I guess it's only for a while. Lindsay Murray reached out to me and she is of the band Gretchen's Wheel. She sent me four of her albums on CD and vinyl both. I'll leave a link to her website down below in the description box so you guys can check her out. Uh, she's collaborated with some big names in power pop and indie music. For instance, on this first album she did, uh, she collaborated with Ken Stringfellow and he produced this one. So this one's called Fragile State, really enjoyed that. She also sent me her album Sad Scientist from 2017. Oh, here's the note, very nice note she included. Wanted to be sure to give her a shout out and thank you. And then I, I've really been enjoying spinning her recent album from last year, from 2020 called Such Open Sky. And this gatefold with the lyrics and a picture of her in there. We got some big names making appearances on this album, such as Brendan Benson. He's a great power pop artist. Uh, Matthew Cause from Not A Surf, as well as John Auer from The Posies. She even does a Guided By Voices cover on this album. Uh, I think it's Learning To Hunt. Yeah. Um, I really love the song Can't Shake The Feeling on here. Definitely check out Gretchen's Wheel. Thank you so much, Lindsay. One I haven't even gotten to spin yet because I've just been kind of so immersed with music lately. Uh, this is Gretchen Wheel's Black Box Theory. Picture of her on the back. Lindsay, thank you so much. Really enjoying your tunes. The Jazz Butcher is next and I was able to find this for a great price, A Scandal in Bohemia. I only had um, their EP, I think it's called Sex and Travel, and I showed that before. Uh, Petfish, just goofy, humorous lyrics. This is quite enjoyable. I think they can be in a category all their own. What do you guys think? This is the album to get from them, in my opinion. Such an entertaining album right here, you can't help but love it. The musicianship is so good. And David J is on this record. See him there? Um, so David J, obviously, uh, bassist from Bauhaus and Love and Rockets. So I picked that up, really been on a jazz butcher kick lately, and I picked up Cult of the Basement as well. Very, very much enjoying this one too. I like the songs, uh, She's on Drugs and Panic in Room 109. You guys gotta hear this stuff. It's jangly indie pop from the late 80s, early 90s. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the 3 o'clock briefly. Um, I already mentioned them in my Paisley Underground Jangle Pop Part 3 episode. So David up in Canada, you guys probably all know him. He has the channel Naz Nomad. Awesome channel. He's always finding amazing thrift finds. And he did a stereo room tour um, just recently. But check him out. I wanted to thank him for sending me this all the way from Canada. This is their album, Arrive Without Traveling. This is a crucial one from this band and I just didn't have it before. The songs, Her Head's Revolving, Mrs. Green, The Girl with the Guitar. What a great album right here. So thank you so very much, David. This is on IRS. And I also wanted to thank him for sending me a damn shirt, which um, are my favorite punk band of all time, by the way. And he is also a huge fan of The Damned. So that was very, very generous. Thank you, David. Really quick update, shoes update. So I finally found an early press of black vinyl shoes. I found this down in Lincoln and I was like, what? I, I haven't been able to find it before and then it shows up in Lincoln. So you got the original inner with pictures and the lyrics, just excellent copy right here. So this is actually a second US press of this album. So happy to have it. Oh my gosh, I have been looking for this album for I don't know how long, a couple years. So that's a very nice welcome addition to the collection. Then I found Boomerang as well. Um, I don't know, this one came out in 1982. I really love the song Too Soon. This is an underrated album of theirs. It doesn't quite get the kudos it deserves. 
but I've talked about shoes before. They are probably in my, they might even be in my top three favorite power pop bands, at least right now. I just can't get enough of shoes. And I also got this for Christmas. This is their album Ignition, which actually came out in 2012. Solid album, hooks a plenty. Um, the Joke's On You, that's a song I really like. Yeah, Diminishing Returns is also another one I really liked. So, update to shoes collection. Wanted to say thanks to Marty Scott from Gem Records. He introduced me to Gold Needles through a window. So he sent that as well as their new album, which may not have been released yet. I think it might be released at the end of this month. Um, this is What's Tomorrow Ever Done For You. This is a UK band, great covers on here. Uh, the Hollies, Have You Ever Loved Somebody. Beatles cover, If I Needed Someone. And then he sent me the red button and this is kind of um, a retrospective or a collection. It has their albums, She's About to Cross My Mind and As Far As Yesterday, as well as a new EP and Unplugged Rarities on here. Really generous of him to have sent that as well. Outstanding original tunes, definitely influenced by the Fab Four. I also hear Elvis Costello in their music. Uh, they're a duo of singer-songwriters, multi-instrumentalists, super melodic, lots of jangly guitars. So I really like the red button. Great. She's fine in the sunshine or the shade beneath the stairs. Australian band DM3. This is kind of uh, a best of album is called West of Anywhere. Show that real quick. I have not talked about them before. The leader of the group is Dom Mariani. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. He was also in the bands The Stems and The Some Loves. Uh, he's been in several other bands as well, but those are probably the two most well known. This band had lots of energy, strong hooks. Really amazing album from them is Road to Rome. Anyway, this is just a wonderful best of of sorts if you want to check out DM3. Red Planet. Thank you to Ian Ballantyne who sent me a package of goodies. Um, this was the Power Pop release that was in there. I had never heard of this album before and this album is called Revolution 33. It's modern Power Pop kind of pop punk at times. I hear lots of cars, which um, that's a good thing. So this was released in 2007 and I really enjoyed this. So thank you, Ian, for that one. All right, I wanted to, I'm gonna try to hurry up here because this is really long. I wanna mention the Sunny Boys and this, this CD I ordered from China when the pandemic was first started basic or um was getting bad last april i ordered it and it finally got to me in july and who knows it could be like um a counterfeit copy i don't know it's a double disc edition of their first album it's just self-titled so this is a band from sydney australia this is guitar pop with an edge um kind of moody at times very well written songs lots of 60s influences they throw in some organ in there, um, so it's it's a good listen. I like Gone and Alone With You, so I was able to get that. And then I found this on eBay for a really good price. This is their follow-up album. It's called Individuals, and it's on the Mushroom label right there. Um, not as energetic. It's more of a subdued follow-up album. The song that I thought was so good on this, I think, was... Um, you need a friend. So Sunny Boys, bringing us some good uh, power pop, guitar pop. Another big thanks to Patrick for this trade. Um, I'm gonna be showing several more items he sent me in that trade. This is Miracle Legion. They're a band from New Haven, Connecticut, and this is their album called Surprise, Surprise, Surprise. This is so very good. I've really been digging this album lately and I can't wait to find more from them. They're kind of hard to find. Um, they're folky pop. They're similar to R.E.M. with the jangly guitars. Mark Mulcahy, uh, he's the leader of the group. He went on to form Polaris and do you guys remember 
that Nickelodeon show, The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Well, he did the music for that. This is a lost gem right here. Um, I play the song truly over and over again. And I love the song Won Wonderment as well. And he also sent me Only Life from the Feelies. I was more impressed with this album than their debut, uh, which I have on CD, Crazy Rhythms. This album, um, I don't know, the guitars on this album were taken to a new level. And this is a very jangly album. It's, you guys have to hear this. Deep Fascination and Away on this are killer. He also sent um, Planet England from Robin Hitchcock and Andy Partridge from XTC. This is kind of a mini album they did together. They released it in 2019. There's four tracks on here. You have to check this out. It's worth having. And then Flame and Groovy's Jumpin' in the Night, which I never have been able to find this. So I was just thrilled when he said he had this copy laying around. And it's on Sire. This is my favorite period of the Flame and Groovies, um, starting with Shake Some Action. Shake Some Action Now and Jumpin' in the Night are my favorite period of the Groovies. And they do amazing covers on here. I mean, they, they do a cover of my favorite bird song, It Won't Be Wrong. Awesome. Uh, what am I missing? I wanna show one more. That's all I have time for. Sorry, you guys, this is going on way too long. Okay, last one, Windbreakers, and then I gotta go. I gotta jet. Okay, so I found Terminal, which is their first full-length album. This left me in awe, to be honest. This is like the second coming of Big Star. This is like Big Star if they went on into the 80s, okay? Um, I don't know. I was just like, wow. Uh, they even cover television's song glory but that's definitely not a standout song so i especially love bobby the bobby sutliff songs on here and um so bobby sutliff and tim lee they're the singer songwriter guitarists on this album they are like chris bell and alex chilton in my opinion especially on this album it's both power pop and jangle pop guess who it's produced by mitch easter that tells you that tells you something right there this album, um, I'm gonna try to include a clip, but like I said, I, I prefer Bobby Sutliff's vocals and his songs. Tim Lee's vocals, his vocal style, I can't really get into. It's it's kind of more twangy. I don't know how to <laughs> describe it. But I also picked up Electric Landlady. This one came out, I think in 91 or so, recorded in 1990. Okay, so that one, that's a solid album. But this, At Home with Bobby and Tim. Um, this is a cool edition of this because you also get Terminal. Those are the extra tracks on there. At Home with Bobby and Tim, that's probably my second favorite album by them. Terminal being number one. And then I, I ended up picking up Bobby Sutliff's solo album, Only Ghosts Remain. His other albums are really hard to find and they're just not really in circulation anymore, so you gotta hunt him down. Tim Lee's album, What Time Will Tell, that's good too. This was released in 1988, so. Huge fan of the Windbreakers and their solo careers, you guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna end it here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it with part two because I just have been collecting a lot of power pop during the pandemic and there is definitely a lot more to show, but I mean, look at the time. I, I gotta end it here. This is ridiculous. So uh, stay safe. I think I'm gonna do a finds video next. Um, and I've gotten quite, quite a bit of albums that friends in this community have sent me so I do want to take the time and show them and um, express my thank you so uh, stay tuned for the next video you guys hopefully it won't take a month or longer to put that out but appreciate ya and stay safe be well see you next time later